Chapter 4 The Result of Inaction When men use their powers as God directs, their talents will increase, their ability will enlarge, and they will have heavenly wisdom in seeking to save the lost. But while the church members are listless and neglectful of their God-given responsibility to impart to others, how can they expect to receive the treasure of heaven? When professed Christians feel no burden to enlighten those in darkness, when they cease to impart grace and knowledge, they become less discerning. They lose their appreciation of the richness of the heavenly endowment, and, failing to value it themselves, they fail to realize the necessity of presenting it to others. We see large churches gathered in different localities. Their members have gained a knowledge of the truth, and many are content to hear the word of life without seeking to impart light. They feel little responsibility for the progress of the work, little interest in the salvation of souls. They are full of zeal and worldly things, but they do not bring their religion into their business. They say religion is religion and business is business. They believe that each has its proper sphere, but they say, let them be separated. Because of neglected opportunities and abuse of privileges, the members of these churches are not growing in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. See 2 Peter 3.18. Therefore, they are weak in faith, deficient in knowledge, and children in experience. They are not rooted and grounded in the truth. If they remain thus, the many delusions of the last days will surely deceive them, for they will have no spiritual eyesight to distinguish truth from error. God has given his ministers the message of truth to proclaim. This the churches are to receive and in every possible way to communicate, catching the first rays of light and diffusing them. Here is our great sin. We are years behind. The ministers have been seeking the hidden treasure and have been opening up the casket and letting the jewels of truth shine forth, but the members of the church have not done a hundredth part of that which God requires of them. What can we expect but deterioration in religious life when the people listen to sermon after sermon and do not put the instruction into practice? The ability God has given, if not exercised, degenerates. More than this, when the churches are left to inactivity, Satan sees to it that they are employed. He occupies the field and engages the members in lines of work that absorb their energies, destroy spirituality, and cause them to fall as dead weights upon the church. There are among us those who, if they would take time to consider, would regard their do-nothing position as a sinful neglect of their God-given talents. Brethren and sisters, your Redeemer and all the holy angels are grieved at your hardness of heart. Christ gave his own life to save souls. And yet you who have known his love make so little effort to impart the blessings of his grace for those for whom he died. Such indifference and neglect of duty is an amazement to the angels. In the judgment you must meet the souls you have neglected. In that great day you will be self-convicted and self-condemned. May the Lord lead you now to repentance. May he forgive his people for neglecting the work in his vineyard which he has given them to do. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Revelation 2, 5. Oh, how few know the time of their visitation! How few, even among those who claim to believe present truth, understand the signs of the times or what we are to experience before the end. We are today under divine forbearance. But how long will the angels of God continue to hold the winds that they shall not blow? Notwithstanding God's inexpressible mercy toward us, how few in our churches are truly humble devoted, God-fearing servants of Christ.
How few hearts are full of gratitude and thanksgiving because they are called and honored to act a part in the work of God, being partakers with Christ of his sufferings. Today, a large part of those who compose our congregations are dead in trespasses and sins. They come and go like the door upon its hinges. For years they have complacently listened to the most solemn, soul-stirring truths, but they have not put them in practice. Therefore, they are less and less sensible of the preciousness of truth. The stirring testimonies of reproof and warning do not arouse them to repentance. The sweetest melodies that come from God through human lips, justification by faith and the righteousness of Christ, do not call forth from them a response of love and gratitude. Though the heavenly merchantman displays before them the richest jewels of faith and love, though he invites them to buy of him gold tried in the fire, and white raiment that they may be clothed, and eyes have that they may see, they steel their hearts against him, and fail to exchange their lukewarmness for love and zeal. While making a profession... They deny the power of godliness. If they continue in this state, God will reject them. They are unfitting themselves to be members of his family.